What is going on, YouTube? Uh, this is Lamont at Large. I got a special guest, Roland, uh, that I ran into at the Forest Hill Cemetery here in Madison, Wisconsin. He has an interesting story to tell about a couple of graves uh, here at the uh, Forest Hill Cemetery. So uh, go ahead. Um, this here is the grave of uh, Harvey Pierce. He was working with a friend of mine by the name of Paul Torgerson, you know, back in 1999. They were working together at the... There used to be an Arby's here by Westtown Mall, and uh, Paul made the mistake of selling this guy this, you know, junky old 30 special, 38 special that he had, not knowing that the guy was a convicted felon. And uh, this guy, so this guy right here, Harvey, was a convicted felon. Correct. He was a convicted felon, and he had, you know, restraining orders against him due to domestic violence. So the day after he sells him the gun, this guy goes to the the Walmart by Westtown Mall where his ex girlfriend worked, and he. Uh, he shot her in the neck, and her new boyfriend, who was with her, he shot him in the head and killed him. His ex-girlfriend actually lived, and he then, you know, walked around to the back of the building and you know, turned the gun on himself. So your friend that worked at Arby's sold this guy the gun, yeah. and he so he bought it to kill himself and to kill his correct, girlfriend. Correct, And of course, my friend, you know, he had, uh, he had, you know, no idea that, you know, this was about to happen, and, you know, he was... He thought, you know, he was going to get, you know, criminally prosecuted for selling a gun to a convicted felon. So whatever. So what happened to your friend? Did uh, he get into trouble? No, he didn't. Because here in Wisconsin, you know, it's it's legal to, you know, privately sell a firearm to another person without doing any kind of background check. So you're not required to do that. Does your friend? Uh, does he still feel? Is he still alive? Your friend? Yeah, he is. Does he still feel guilty about what happened? I haven't talked to him in quite a few years, but. Yeah, yeah, he was he was feeling pretty guilty about it and uh Yeah. I think that was I think he was more afraid of, you know, going to jail. Yeah, of course. I mean, he didn't know that he was selling uh this Correct. guy. Correct. Uh okay, so you said coincidentally enough that the guy that he killed is also buried here? Yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's all the way down this road at the end of the cemetery there. At Can we find him? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so we're going to go we're going to go take a stroll. We're going to go find uh, the guy that he killed. Now, really quick, before we go to the grave of the man that he murdered, uh, Roland was just telling me that these two are the guy that committed the murder. These are his parents? Yeah, yeah. June 11th there. So he died on June 11th, 19... Correct. 1999. And, and, that and the mother died about a year later. Yeah. So this is the mother and the father of yeah, the man who. Yeah. So yeah, she died just slightly more, a little more than a year later. So I'm sure that you know just broke her heart, having her. And then the father died in 1977, so he wasn't around to see right. what was what yeah. was going to happen. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's go, let's go stroll and let's go take a look at the. Uh... Uh, this is the grave of David Jones. Um, he was murdered by Harvey Pierce back in 1999. My, my friend Paul Torgerson sold the gun to the murderer, and, you know, next day he went and killed this guy and also shot his ex-girlfriend. Now, the guy that shot his ex-girlfriend and her current boyfriend, who, who, David Jones was the current boyfriend, yes, yes. Um, did anything, like when he shot her in the neck, do you know if anything happened to her, like any ramifications that she become paralyzed? Or? No, no, I believe the bullet, it missed all the vitals and she fully recovered. Okay. Mr. Jones, unfortunately, wasn't so lucky. You know, he was shot yeah. in the head. And... Okay, and then, uh, so we're going to go take a look at a couple other graves uh, that Roland uh, knows about. So let's go take a stroll again. Uh, this is the grave of Andrea Garcia. Um, she's the daughter of a local police officer. Her and her boyfriend were driving through town here and uh he was just driving incredibly reckless going way too fast and the car ended up flipping over and uh killing her and um the boyfriend he ended up being charged with vehicular manslaughter and i think he ended up being sentenced to like 10 years in prison i don't recall his name uh this is the grave of george argyris uh he was a immigrant from Greece, as you can see by his tombstone, and uh, he uh, murdered his uh, 
his girlfriend, he bludgeoned her to death with a table leg. Then he uh, drove across town. There was a guy he had uh, was having a dispute with. He was, you know, sitting in the middle of a bar, and he just walked in, put a gun to his head, and killed him right there and then. And then just drove to his house, and by then the police were hot on his trail, and uh, he tried to barricade himself in his uh, in his house. And you know, as the cops broke the door down, he turned the gun on himself and killed himself. And uh, this right here, you said, is his mother. That yeah, that is his mother uh, she, she was also you know they both emigrated here in the in the late 1900s from Greece uh, this is the grave of Rocky Pyle um, he owned an auto detailing shop here in Madison and uh, a friend of mine worked for him and uh, one thing he told me that uh, he was really into coke and a lot of his employees were into coke too um, and uh, he was also a power lifter. Why there's the big barbell on his uh, tombstone? He was a you know, real big, strong guy. And uh, one night he did so much cocaine that you know he just he became delirious, and he was just kind of walking through his neighborhood, you know, like smashing people's barbecue grills and you know damaging people's cars and things like that. So the cops were called out to you know put an end to his little rampage and. Um, it ended up, you know, he fought the cops, and he was a really big guy, very strong. And uh, ended with him on the ground, and you know, about you know half the Madison Police Department on top of the guy trying to get control of him. And at some point, you know, his his uh, you know, he stopped breathing, and he ended up dying as a result of that. There was also kind of a scandal afterwards because it was determined that when they buried him. Um, the medical examiner didn't send any of his like internal organs to the funeral home after they did the autopsy and uh you know his wife was all pissed off about that because you know they buried him without any of his organs so that caused kind of a controversy here in madison do you know if the wife sued the police department or what happened I, with that? I don't believe she did she just you know voiced her displeasure with it understandably uh, this is the grave of Kevin Mills. Um, he was a neighbor of mine when I lived over on the south side of Madison. And, um, he was involved in dealing drugs, and uh, one of his associates accused him of uh, ripping him off. So he uh, he ambushed uh, uh, Mr. Mills while he was in his car and uh, shot him to death. You know, they caught the guy and you know, put him in prison for a really long time drug deal gone bad uh, you know, never hear about the ones that go good <laughs> yeah no that's that's definitely true yeah, yeah. Um, this is the grave of Lizette Fountain um, this is a case of uh, thug loving gone wrong thug loving gone wrong that is right uh, you know she was a real nice girl um, you know a cheerleader good graves all that but he was dating this complete low life by the name of Tom McCants. He was just a dirt bag. I went to high school with him. He was uh, he was he was quite a few years older than she was, and uh, he was just a dirt bag, a you know gang member, drug dealer, and uh, what, was it his personality that made him like what what made him a dirt bag to you? Like what would he do? Well, uh, he was a bully. You know, uh, I remember him. Uh, I only went to high school with him, but I knew people who went to like, uh, you know, junior high and elementary school with him. And, you know, what I was told is he just, you know, relentlessly picked on people, you know, T2 was his nickname. That's what everybody called him in high school. Uh, you know, he was involved in selling drugs, just, you know, just, just a low life. He's always trying to start with people, just, you know, just, a, just a creep. So what ended up happening is, you know, he murdered her, he shot her to death, and uh, uh, they were never able to determine a motive for why he killed her, because um, he never confessed to the crime, you know, he continues to deny it to this day, but, you know, they did found, find the weapon on him that was used in her murder, so he was convicted, and uh, up until recently, they were pretty strict here in Dane County, so... He got, they sentenced him to life with no parole. He's pretty much in for life. 
Now, you didn't know Lizette? Uh, no, no, her I didn't know because, uh, you know, I graduated in uh, 96, and, uh, you know, she, uh, she w we wouldn't have gone to high school together, but I did go to high school with, uh, with, uh, with Tom McCants. He was a year, a year uh, younger than I was, so when this happened right away, I'm like, oh, I you know, uh, killed somebody, no surprise there. This is the grave of a Chua Vang. He was a guy I went to junior high and also high school with. Really nice guy. Me and him used to hang out from time to time. Super good dude. Uh, he had a, he was a real big guy, you know, real real heavy. That's why you see it says Mountain Man on his uh, on his uh, on his stone. Even back in junior high, the guy was just like gigantic. Um, he was like really broad. He ended up developing a cardiomyopathy, which is an enlargement of the heart. Shortly after he, he was diagnosed, he died. And you can see, you know, he died fairly young, 38. Yeah, he died two days before his birthday. Yeah, yeah. Very unfortunate. Super nice guy. Uh, this is the grave at Doug Wells. Um, he was another person I went to high school with. He was an aspiring rapper here in Madison. He ended up getting killed in a car wreck, like the day before Christmas, of all things, you know. This is the grave of Dennis Richmond. Um, he's a guy I went to uh, went to junior high high school with here in Madison. Really nice guy. Uh, he was uh, murdered back in 1998. He was downtown here in Madison at a bar, and he ended up you know getting into a scuffle with a couple guys and getting the better of them, and they weren't real happy about that. So, just so happens they knew where he lived, so they. Uh, went back to his, his house and lay in wait for him and, uh, and he showed up there later that night they ambushed him and uh, murdered him it took the madison police department a really long time to solve that crime i want to say it took them like something like 10 years or more because they knew exactly who did it but they just they couldn't get the proof to actually convict him and then Finally, you know, they just waited for the guys to slip up and, you know, talk to the wrong people. And then they were able to get them and they all got convicted and, you know, sent to prison. You know, very unfortunate case. His, uh, his mother is buried right there. You can see she died in, uh, you know, three years ago. And I know she was really, really distraught, you know, after, after her son's murder. So those are his parents, John and Lily? Correct, yeah. The mom, uh, I know she had brain cancer. That's what she died of. I wonder why they weren't buried next to him right here. Um, some of, some of these plots are actually unmarked, meaning there's actually... Uh, oh, somebody buried yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the plots in the cemetery don't have stones. You'd be surprised. So you just mentioned how there's people actually buried right here, but there's no tombstones. You said that you know somebody that's buried yeah, right along yeah. this stretch. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people are buried here that um, you know don't have headstones. And one of the people was a guy by the name of Lonnie Smith. I worked with him at a company called a Production Machine uh -huh. here in Madison, Wisconsin, on the east side. Um, and he actually had a fatal heart attack at the age of 38 if you can believe that. And uh, I know his dad, Lonnie Smith Sr., is buried uh, a ways down there. And I know he's buried somewhere in this section here and he just doesn't have a headstone, which, which seems odd to me. Uh, this is the grave of Jason Croner. He was a guy I used to be friends with, you know, really nice guy. Uh, he died of a heroin overdose. What's funny about it is no one that knew the guy even knew that he was using heroin, you know, if not me, and even people who were a lot closer to him, you know, his, uh, his fiance, fiance uh, he actually died in bed with his, next to his fiance. She said she woke up, you know, the next morning and he was in bed, just kind of like slumped over in like a really odd position. And she said he was, you know, he turned completely blue and he was cold to the touch. Um, you know, very unfortunate, you know, a super nice guy. He, uh, he owned his own catering company. 
he was he was just about to get married. You know, it looked mm. like he had a really bright future ahead of him. But you know, pretty young to own his yeah, own business, so yeah, you can yeah. see that he probably had a future ahead of him yeah. if it wasn't for that uh, that dreaded uh, addiction. Yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. You know, very very ambitious, uh, go getter. But you know, he just um, you know I I was also friends with his you know the guy who was his best friend, a guy by the name of Aaron Johnson, and he uh, um, he actually said that you know. He, he didn't even know that he was messing around with heroin. You know, he's his best friend, so the guy was kind of keeping it a secret. Everybody was very, uh, very surprised and shocked by that. You know, yeah, yeah, heroin is uh, that's not a drug that is easy to be kept uh, a secret when you're doing. So it just sounded to me he was just a totally functioning uh, addict. But unfortunately, you know. There's really no such thing as a smart heroin addict. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's absolutely. a saying within the, the, the uh, IV drug user community. Oh, I'm a smart heroin addict. Well, yeah, there's, there's no th- this is the proof that there is no such thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it might have been a situation where he just kind of got, st- just started using it. He hadn't been doing it for, for very long. Possibly didn't know what was too much or who knows. But, uh, yeah, it's a shame. It's a, a young life lost to, uh, to drug use and probably had a lot of potential from what it sounds like absolutely okay i want to thank my faithful subscriber roland who uh, ran into me at the cemetery for giving us a quick uh, tour of the forest hill cemetery so live but not live but still alive by the grace of god i am lamont and this is roland and we we are at the forest hill cemetery in madison wisconsin we'll catch up with you on the next well at least i will catch up with you on the next uh, video catch up with you later peace out